This lesson will test your ability to recognize patterns because here we're going to learn how to factor the sum and difference of cubes and there's a pattern that you can use to factor quickly. And this is a very specific example, specific case where it has to be a sum or a difference of two things that are cubed. So here is the principle. If you have a cubed plus b cubed then you take that first value that was being cubed, put that here, and then the second value being cubed, put that over here. And then the first value that's being cubed, you square it. That's going to be the first term in this parentheses. You take this last term that was being cubed and you square that. That's your last term. And then you multiply the a and the b together to get a, b. And if it was a plus sign, you're going to put a minus right here. So this plus sign will be uh, a plus sign here also. These will be the same. And then this minus sign will be the opposite. And then the last term will always be a plus, so plus b squared. And then if you have a difference of cubes, so a cubed minus b cubed, this becomes a minus b, this becomes a squared plus ab, and then this still remains as plus b squared. So use that to try to pick up on the patterns with these other examples. Here we have x cubed plus 1. So notice here we have the x being cubed, and then here we have the 1 being cubed. So instead of a and b, we have x and 1. So anywhere you see an a, you can put an x. Anywhere you see a b, you can put a 1. So instead of a plus b, you'd have x plus 1. Instead of a squared, you'd have x squared. And then instead of a times b, we'd have x times 1, or just 1x. And instead of b squared, we have 1 squared. So this becomes x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. And that is the shortcut to factor a sum of cubes. Another example. Here we have an x being cubed, and then we have a 2 being cubed. 8 is 2 to the third power. So anywhere I see an a, I put an x. Anywhere I see a b, I put a 2. So instead of a plus b, I have x plus 2. Instead of a squared, I have x squared. Instead of a times b, I have x times 2, which is the 2x. And instead of b squared, I have 2 squared, which is 4. So notice the pattern. Here is another example where we have x cubed and here we have a 3 cubed. So same thing, instead of a and b, we have x and 3. So I have x plus 3, and then I have x squared, and then 3 times x, and then I have 3 squared, which would be 9. So this would be the factored form of x cubed plus 27. One more, x cubed plus 64. This would be x cubed, and then 64 would be 4 cubed. So we have x plus 4 times, and then this becomes x squared, and then 4 times x, and then 4 squared gives me 16. So notice the pattern. Okay, and then what if instead of an x cubed, we had something like, uh, here's another one, but let's say we had something like 8x cubed plus 1. So here, the 8 is the same thing as 2 cubed, right? 2 times 2 times 2. So I can think of this expression as 2x to the third power because 2 cubed is 8, x cubed is x cubed. And then over here, this is going to be 1 cubed. So instead of a and b, I'm going to plug in a 2x and a 1. So instead of a plus b, I have 2x plus 1. Instead of a squared, I have 2x squared. So 2 squared is 4, x squared is x squared. Instead of a times b, I have 2x times 1, or just 2x. And instead of b squared, I have 1 squared. So this would be the factored form. Another example, 8x cubed plus 8. This is 2x to the third power. And this is 2 cubed. So instead of a and b, I have 2x and I have 2. So I have 2x plus 2. And then 2x squared gives me 4x squared. 2 squared gives me 4. 
2 times 2x gives you the 4x. And there are a bunch of other examples you could look at if you would like. And all of these is the same pattern. So if you want, you could pause and try to determine how we got each of these. But the pattern is still the same. And over here, I'll just point out this is going to be 3 cubed gives you 27. So this becomes 3x to the third power. And this becomes 1 to the third power. So instead of a and b, we have 3x and 1. So notice the pattern. If you recognize a pattern, you, you can factor this very quickly. But the key is recognizing that pattern. And then with a the difference of cubes, so instead of a cubed plus b cubed, we have a cubed minus b cubed. And notice, like we said about, about the sign, if this is a negative, this is also a negative, and this sign will be the opposite. And then this plus over here will always be a plus. And exactly the same concept, just plug in the numbers. So here are all the different uh, examples I have here on the slide. And the pattern is the same. Right? Just the only difference here is with the, with the signs. So recognize the pattern. Take a moment to, to try to commit this to memory. Because once you have this committed to memory, the factoring is actually pretty quick. It's not too bad. Now, once you have a pretty good grasp on factoring a sum and difference of cubes, take one moment and go with me to this next problem. Where here, you're told to factor completely. And... This one, uh, it doesn't look like anything that we were just doing, but it will be in a moment. Because remember, when you factor something, the first thing you always want to do is see, is there anything that the terms have in common that I can pull out? So if you look at the two terms, 81xy to the third and 3x to the fourth, the greatest common factor of 81 and 3 would be a 3. They both have a 3 in common. And notice they also have an x in common. I can pull an x out of both of these. So my greatest common factor would be a 3x. So I can factor out a 3x, and I'm left with something in parentheses. So 3x times what gives you 81xy to the third? Well, 3 times what gives me 81? That's going to be 27. And then we need a y th to the third in there, so let's put that right there. So this becomes uh, 3x times 27y to the third, and then plus 3x times what will give you this last term. So what times 3x gives you 3x to the fourth? That's going to be x to the third power. So now I have this expression, and notice that what I have right here is actually a sum of cubes, because 27 is 3 cubed. And then we have the y cubed as well. So we can write this as 3y to the third power. And then over here, we have x cubed. So we have x to the third power. So with the sum of cubes, if you remember the pattern, instead of a and b, I'm going to put in a 3y and an x. So this becomes a 3y, and this becomes an x. So 3y squared, and then minus 3y times x. And then b squared, uh, we said b was x, so this becomes x squared. And that's all there is to it. So it becomes uh, 3x times 3y plus x, and then 3y squared. That 3 squared is 9, so we have 9y squared. And then up here we have a 3yx. Um, usually put the variables in order, so we put the x first, then the y, and then the x squared over here. So that's it, we're done. But the key is make sure that you factor. Um, the greatest common factor out first, and then notice what we have um, here is the sum of cubes. Using our pattern, we can factor that quickly, and we are done. And that concludes our lesson for today. So we will see you next time.